Welcome to Talk It To. If you are watching this video, congratulations. It means you and your team have embraced this exciting innovation to not only help you save time, but take a load off and reduce some of that strain that's caused by typing and all the other things that you have to do throughout the run of a day. So in this video, we're going to be going over my top tips and tricks, and hopefully you've already had an onboarding session with us, and this is just a review. It is, you know, Talk It To is very easy to use, so this probably is the only review that you'll need. But if you have not had one of those sessions and you'd like to book one, an onboarding is free. We'd love to get connected with you and we'd love to help you get started. So let's dive right in. This of course is the Talk to Dictation bar and it's the app itself as well. So the little hamburger here opens up the menu, pop, pop it open and close. Typically, Talk It To is going to live just above your clock here. And as you can see, anywhere in this white space allows me to drag it around. So the first thing I want to cover is the punctuation modes. There are two punctuation modes. So if you're not a fan of the default automatic punctuation, don't worry. It's so easy to turn on spoken punctuation. But first, let's see how it works just as it is with the default mode. And of course, I am using my specialty uh, noise canceling microphone as well. So all I have to do is place my cursor exactly where I want my text to go. Literally anywhere you can type on your computer, you can do this and then hit the record button on your microphone and start dictating. Hi, my name is Kirsten and this is how I use Talk It To. Great, so we saw how it works with the automatic punctuation. I didn't have to say comma or period, and that's awesome. It's gonna speed you up even more. Now, if you're someone who has already used dictation before, you're probably familiar with having to say your periods and your commas and so on. Um, or also if you're a stickler for punctuation, um, if you're someone who doesn't care too much about that, then go for the automatic punctuation and it will save you a load of time. But otherwise, all you have to do to turn on spoken punctuation is go to your settings page, scroll down the page. Now here we have it set as is to the default. So when spoken is off, that means you're in the automatic mode and we just toggle it on to switch. Now we'll see the difference. Mucous membranes were pink, period. Her capillary refill time was one second, period. Her hydration status is adequate, period. She has a heart rate of 90 beats per minute with no arrhythmia, period. New paragraph. Incomplete ossification of the humeral condyle. New line. All right, so I showed you a couple extra things there. The only voice commands that the software does is new line and new paragraph. Anything else that you need to correct, you just go in with your mouse and keyboard like you normally would. So it's really quick and easy. If I wanna change a word, I can just highlight it with my mouse and either redictate it or type it. So all that is super simple. Now I'm gonna go back to the um, automatic punctuation mode for a moment because I wanna discuss the live corrections. Talk It To is listening for the um, context of your speech, and that's how it decides where to put its punctuation points, and it's also how it decides on the correct terms. And you don't need to uh, train Talk It To, it doesn't need to learn your voice. Anyone can walk up and start using this. It has a comprehensive veterinary vocabulary. And when we're in this automatic mode, and just in general, it does its own edit. So you will see it backspace from time to time. Don't be alarmed. It's it's just going back and fixing things for you. Um, but one thing you want to be careful of is stopping it too soon. So if it's going back and we happen to click the stop dictation, we can cut off some of our transcript. So a good rule of thumb is just to pause for three seconds at least at the end to make sure it's not about to go back and make any further edits before you turn it off. If you find this live corrections frustrating and it's doing a lot of backspacing on you and um, you just find it difficult to follow or form your thoughts, then we do have a solution for that. So back on the settings page, you can turn off the live correction. So I'm going to do that. I'll also put this spoken punctuation back on because that's my preferred mode. And so the difference here is that we're only going to see a completed 
dictation. And so it's not going to make any corrections and it will take slightly longer for the words to appear on screen. Actually, nothing is going to appear until I've given it that good pause um, because it knows at that point what I've said and it doesn't need to make any further corrections. Fluffy presented for a routine checkup period. He was not EDUD period. Fluffy is a sick puppy period. Okay, so see the delay there? It's not a real delay, it's just that it's not showing you in real time. So some people prefer the live corrections turned off, other people like to see the words appear in real time. So you decide what is gonna be best for you. Now also in the settings page, there's something really important. You wanna always make sure that your speech mic or Olympus mic is selected. Um, sometimes people will have this set to their internal computer microphone. And of course, the quality of that is much lower. And so you're going to end up with poor dictation results. So one of the very first things that you always want to check is to make sure that you have either speech mic here or the other one that we've provided is the Olympus and it shows up as the RM microphone. Scrolling down, you also want to make sure that your microphone is in the correct mode. So the way I like to test this is we've got our diagram here that shows us what key presses the microphone can perform. The one you'll use the most is the start and stop dictation, of course. So I can tell whether or not my microphone's in the correct mode simply by clicking the record button. If Talka 2 turns on like that, we're good to go. Now, if you're using Talka 2 and um, this little... Uh, bar here is not moving, that also means that it's not picking up your sound. And so you may need to check the sound settings on your computer, which we're going to do here in a second. Uh, but say it's not turning on the dictation bar, that means your microphone's not in the correct mode. Just come over here to device setup. It's super easy to do. Follow the diagram and in three seconds, your microphone will be ready to go. Okay, so um, the other really important tip, like I just said, is that we want to check our sound settings for the device itself, the microphone. And this goes for everyone. Uh, the microphones you have are really powerful dictation microphone, and they have exceptional noise canceling capabilities. But if the input volume is turned up too high, then it's not going to be doing its job. So what we need to do is go to your uh, computer control panel. So you can just type here to search control panel. It's going to pull open this window. And you might have the small icons if you do just go directly to sound. So I went hardware and sound, then I found sound. And the input is actually under the recording tab here at the top. I'm going to find my speech mic, double click on it, and then go to the levels tab. And here I suggest having it anywhere from 30 input volume to 60 input volume. Uh, if you're in a really noisy environment, you definitely want to be more in the lower range, like 30 to 40. Um, and that's where it does a really good job of noise canceling. And so you'll hold your microphone about an inch away from your mouth. And um, if you're dictating and others are dictating around you, just be courteous. Try to keep your voice at a moderate level. All right, so my microphone is set to a good level, so I'll just say okay here. Now, you might also notice that when you plug your microphone in, it becomes your default speakers. If you want to change that back to your computer's default speakers, simply find on the playback tab here your speech mic, right click and disable, and it should default back to uh, your computer's built in speakers or whatever you were using before. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is the my words. This is an important section. So here's how it works. If talking to happens to get a word wrong, it's not that it doesn't have that word in its comprehensive veterinary vocabulary. It's just that for whatever reason, it's having trouble with the recognition. And so my words allows us to add prioritization to specific words that are not coming up for us. And here's how it works. We administered Cephazolin period. Now I'm intentionally pronouncing this drug term a little bit wrong. As we can see, it didn't get it right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my words and add it in. And because it is a drug, I want to capitalize. 
And all you have to do is type it in regularly and hit enter on the keyboard. Now this section isn't just reserved for individual words. You can do titles, you can do complete phrases. Again, talk it to, uh, it understands based off of context. So if it's still struggling, you can put in a phrase to give it more context and every time it gets that phrase, it should get it correct. Now, if you enter a word here and it's still not picking it up right, um, please click here and fill out our little form and report the word to us. Uh, we would love to know we are constantly making improvements to the tool. And like I said, sometimes it's not that it doesn't exist in our vocabulary. It's just that the system needs a little bit of help with the recognition of that term. And so um, the best way for us to find out about them is to learn from our users. So any feedback that you have whatsoever, we really do appreciate that you get in touch with us and let us know. So now that I've added that word to my words, I'm just using my mouse here to highlight what I want to change. And then I'm using the uh, microphone to redictate. Cephazolin, cephazolin, cephazolin. Awesome. So now it's going to get it every time, no matter which way I pronounce the word, because I've added it to my words. So it's that easy. Now I did talk about contacting support. Again, if you have any feedback at all, we would love to hear from you. Features that you'd like to see, tips and tricks um, that you're, you need support with, or if you're having a technical issue, remember computers and software, it can be complicated sometimes in the way that they interact with each other, but our support team is always so happy to help you out. We're available Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, and our team is absolutely fantastic. I can't say it enough. So any issue that you're having, whether it's talk to related or not, I'm sure we can help you with it. So don't hesitate to give us a call. We also have the knowledge base here. So if you are interested in finding some more articles or videos similar to this one, everything that we've seen come up, it is all listed here. Um, but like I said, the fastest and easiest way is just to give us a call. And we know DVMs are very busy. So if you've got a technician nearby um, and they have access to your computer, pass the phone to them, have them give us a ring. We'd love to hear from you and happy dictating.